This is GCSE Physics. This is Energy Lesson 8, and this is Thermal Conductivity. So the objective today is to simply explain what thermal conductivity is and to look at some examples. Any ideas what's happening here then? So we've got two buildings, and this building on the right looks vastly different to this building on the left. Got any ideas why? You might have to take a pause and write them down. Let's have a look. So the question might be, if, if you didn't realise, which building has the best insulation? So is it the building on the right or the building on the left? And why? First of all, what's thermal conductivity? Thermal conductivity, the higher the thermal conductivity of a material, the higher the rate of heat transfer across the material by conduction. Now, conduction, you used to have to know what that was in detail, but now all you need to know is that it's how thermal heat energy travels through a solid material. That's all it is. So, conduction is heat transfer in solids. Okay, so let's go back to the image. So which one of these buildings is giving off the most heat? Is it the one on the left or the one on the right? Well, it's obviously the one on the left because this thermal imaging camera, it can see the heat coming out of the walls. So with regard to thermal conductivity, the, the building on the left is the better thermal conductor, which is not necessarily a good thing for a house. Although it could be, it depends. if you're in a hot country and want the house to cool down, and it's hot inside, then perhaps... But more often than not, you want a building to, to retain the heat that's inside. So the building on the right is definitely better insulated because we can't see the thermal energy coming out through the walls. We can see a little bit. So we've got here something hot there. Might be a person, no idea what that is really. And then the, the curtains obviously have got a lower, sorry, a higher thermal conductivity than the, the outer brickwork or blockwork. Okay, let's move on. So what is this? Maybe you've seen this before, maybe you haven't. Well, this is insulation, and we use this in housing. Um, and newer houses have a lot more insulation. If, if you live in a new house, in the summer you might be unbearably hot because there's a, an absolutely ridiculous amount of insulation in your new house. All the houses might be hard to warm in, in winter months due to the fact that they've not got much insulation. Some houses haven't got any insulation at all if they were built you know, many, many years ago. So, let's move on. So, insulation obviously has a low thermal conductivity, which means we have a less thermal energy loss from our homes. So, basically, it's not very good at transmitting heat via conduction out of the house, from the inside of the house to the outside. But that's a requirement, that's a good thing. Unless it's the middle of the summer and it's 30 degrees upstairs. <clears throat> good in winter though, very good. What about here then? This is my house on the right, on my teacher's salary. That's obviously not true. So, in terms of the windows, the one on the left is an old school single glazing. So that just means one piece of glass. Now when I was young... Single glazing was all the rage. By all the rage, I mean that's basically all you got. Uh, and, the, you know, you used to get condensation in the morning. On the right-hand side, we've got double glazing. So that's just two pieces of glass separated by by a thin layer of, well, basically a vacuum. There's nothing there. So which one's the better conductor? Well, the better conductor is the, the single glaze. The double glaze is isn't a very good conductivity. It's got a lower thermal conductivity. I'm going to write that in. So that's got a low thermal conductivity. If I could spell. There we go. Low thermal conductivity. So nowadays we use double glazing windows because they've got low thermal conductivity and they keep the heat energy, the thermal energy, inside the building. So to consolidate... A single glazing has a high thermal conductivity, double glazing has a much lower thermal conductivity. Therefore, 
It says thermal energy will be lost. It should be less thermal energy will be lost. I did that on purpose just to check you, that you were uh, listening. Therefore, we would save energy on heating bills, which is obviously a good thing, especially if you're paying the bill. All right, let's move on. So to consolidate, how to reduce thermal conductivity in general. To reduce thermal energy transfer from a house, construct the building from materials that have a low thermal conductivity. So when people design and build houses, they not only do they take into account the cost of the materials, but also the you know the thermal conductivity. And nowadays we try to use low thermal conductivity materials. And also we can build the house with thick walls to reduce the thermal conductivity even further. And as you could see, I'll just go back. Standard. Uh, in building, in the UK anyway, is breeze block. Then you've got a gap, 100 millimetre gap. And then what we do is fill that with insulation. Uh, insulation's got low thermal conductivity, so it makes it difficult for the thermal energy to conduct from inside the house to the outside. So as you can see, that wall's are nice and thick. You've got a layer, what they call them, skins, a skin of bricks. Then you've got the, the insulation in the middle, then you've got a skin or a layer of building blocks. And building blocks have a very a very low thermal conductivity as well. Again, to keep that thermal energy inside the property. Okay, let's finish with a question. If you want to pause and have a go at this one. So copper has a high thermal conductivity or a higher thermal conductivity than most metals. How does the rate of energy transfer through copper compare with the rate of energy transfer through most metals? Well, if it's got a higher thermal conductivity, then it's going to transfer you know, a higher amount of thermal energy. So it should take higher. The tank is insulated. When the water is hot, the immersion heater switches off. Complete the sentences. The immersion heater is, is what heats the water in, you know, in your house. Compared to a tank with no insulation, the rate of energy transfer from the water in an insulated tank is, is lower. Because obviously the, the insulation that's surrounding it, you, you might have one of these at home, like a, a jacket that goes over goes over your tank. The the insulation would have a a low thermal as you can see mine writing's really neat, low thermal conductivity. So the rate of heat transfer out of a tank that's got insulation will be less or lower. Or you could use fancy words like diminished. Depending on how good you are in English. Uh, this means that the water in the insulated tank stays warmer or hotter for longer. And that's the entire reason of having a insulation on a tank. To keep the water warm. Which means that we can use the electric immersion heater less. So use this less. And obviously if we're using less energy less electrical energy to heat, then we're going to save what? We save money. To spend on other things. Like pizza. Anyway, hopefully that helped. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you at the next video.